This presentation on management of snake envenoming elaborates the procedure of treatment of a victim subjected to snake bite with a special reference to Sri Lanka. Initially, clinical examination and monitoring of a patient following a venomous or non-venomous snake bite will be briefly discussed. It will be followed by an explanation on snake antivenom, indications for snake antivenom, problems of antivenom administration and how to avoid them and finally on the other treatment strategies for snake envenoming with a special reference to Sri Lanka. Clinical examination and monitoring of a victim is an integral part of the management of a snake bite. Any patient with a history of snake bite should be managed as a medical emergency. Therefore, the first step in management is to secure their airway, breathing and circulation in a patient admitted to the hospital. Meanwhile, it is necessary to obtain a clear image about the patient's condition by assessing all vital signs including pulse rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure and oxygen saturation. Two white bow cannulae are inserted on both hand as part of routine emergency management. The patient should be managed by a medical team including at least one doctor, nursing officers and supporting medical staff. Fluid input and output chart is maintained to assess the renal filtration and concentration ability. This is commonly affected during viper bites in Sri Lanka. As the time permits a detailed history of snake bite should be obtained with careful examination of the snake specimen if available. It is of great importance to identify the type of snake bitten as management wholly depend on whether the snake is a venomous or non-venomous snake and if the snake is venomous whether it is deadly venomous, mildly or feebly venomous. Along with the history, patient should be thoroughly examined for clinical signs and symptoms of envenoming. While examining, it is advised to give special attention to the bite site, nerve system, renal functions and bleeding tendencies. Examination should be done in regular intervals to detect any features of envenoming at the earliest possible time. Early detection of envenoming is critical to give antivenom to prevent irreversible toxic effects. Therefore, history taking, examination and investigation should be mainly focused on detecting any indications for the administration of antivenom as it is the mainstay of treating snake envenom. Usually, snake antivenom is administered intravenously with close monitoring. Snake antivenom is composed of host immunoglobulins or animal immunoglobulins raised against a particular type of snake venom. It is either in dry powder form or in liquid form. Dry powder antivenom should be reconstituted in injectable water or in normal saline. Usually, the reconstituted antivenom is administered in normal saline vehicle. There are several indications for administration of antivenom in Sri Lanka. At the moment, Indian polyvalent antivenom is used in Sri Lanka. The polyvalent antivenom is administered in the presence of any specific systemic envenoming feature following Russell Swiper, Soy Scale Viper, Cobra and Common Trade Bites. Apart from the presence of systemic envenoming features, antivenom is also indicated in when more than half of the bitten limb is involved in Cobra envenoming. This is the only instance where antivenom is indicated following local effect of snake envenoming in Sri Lanka. Antivenom is not indicated in green pit viper, sea snake, hump nose viper and Sri Lankan freight envenoming. According to Sri Lankan guidelines for snake bite management, a dose of 10 to 20 vials of dry powder antivenom should be administered in the presence of an indication. They are reconstituted 
with distilled water which is provided with an antivenom vial. 100 to 200 milliliters of antivenom prepared in this manner is added to 400 or 300 milliliters of normal saline vehicle where the final volume will be 500 milliliters. It is administered intravenously over a period of one hour while monitoring for reactions, especially during the first 15 minutes. The rate of the development of reactions to the antivenom does not depend on the rate of administration of antivenom. Therefore, it is recommended to administer the antivenom over one hour. But if preferred, one can continue the infusion up to two hours. Sri Lanka Medical Association guideline recommended to repeat the antivenom administration by 10 vials 6 hourly if features of coagulopathy persist. This is not recommended for common trait envenomy. Although repeated doses of antivenom is commonly given until the coagulopathy is recovered, the effect of repeated doses of antivenom is yet to be proven by the research. Snake antivenom is one of the medications with highest rate of reactions in the world. Indian antivenom used in Sri Lanka carries a risk of 35 to 80 percent of reaction rate, which is very high when compared to antivenom produced in the rest of the world. Therefore, the risk and benefits of giving antivenom to the patient should be thoroughly evaluated at all times. The severity of reactions to antivenom is categorized into three, namely mild, moderate and severe, which is also known as life threatening. The medication necessary to treat possible reactions including oxygen, adrenaline and white bow cannula should be arranged at the bedside before the administration of antivenom. If the patient develops a reaction, the antivenom infusion should be stopped immediately and reaction should be managed properly. Once the reaction is settled, the antivenom infusion should be started again. Repeated reactions may occur and they should be managed appropriately. Antivenom is the only medication in the world which is administered repeatedly despite of repeated reactions. It is very important to manage early reactions and anaphylaxis that occur within the first hour and up to 48 hours after the administration of antivenom. At the development of mild reactions to antivenom as rash, flushing and gastrointestinal effect, the antivenom infusion is stopped and recommenced at a slower rate once the reaction resolves. If it is severe reaction with sudden hypotension and bronchospasm, immediate action should be taken to save the life of the patient. First of all, stop the antivenom infusion. Lie the patient flat and commence 100% oxygen flow through a mask. Support the patient with and ventilate the patient if required. Secondly, start a bolus infusion of 1 litre of normal saline over 2 to 3 minutes. Then administer 0.1 mg per kilogram of adrenaline intramuscularly to the lateral thigh. Adrenaline can be administered up to a maximum dose of 0.3 mg per kilogram with alternative intravenous doses appropriately. If hypertension persists, repeat normal saline bolus up to 50 ml per kilogram and commence an intravenous infusion of adrenaline. Consider nebulization with salbutamol for bronchospasm. For severe upper airway obstruction occurs nebulize with adrenaline. In severe bradycardia, intravenous atropine is helpful. There is no place for promethazine, hydrocortisone or any other corticosteroids during the management of reactions. Fever Lymphadenopathy, cutaneous eruption and arthralgia observed 8 to 12 days after antivenom administration are thought to due to serum sickness. 
it has a delayed onset of 5 to 14 days after antivenom administration. There are no hard and fast rules to diagnose serum sickness and at present research are conducted to define precise criteria for its diagnosis. Serum sickness is detected when the patient is brought back to the hospital after the antivenom treatment. At the moment, there are no such follow-up assessment conducted for detection of serum sickness in patients who are treated with antivenoms. Serum sickness is treated with a one-week course of steroids. If over 25 milliliters of antivenom is administered to the patient, it is advisable to give a prophylactic course of oral corticosteroids. Can we prevent reactions to snake antivenom? Recent research have discovered that the prophylactic administration of adrenaline can minimize the early reactions to antivenom. But the prophylactic doses of adrenaline should be avoided in older patients with evidence of underlying cerebrovascular diseases and when the particular antivenom in use has a proven low incidence of reaction. The adult dose of prophylactic adrenaline is 0.25 milliliters of 0.1% solution via subcutaneous injection and the dosage for children depend on their body weight. Use of antihistamines, corticosteroids and the rate of intravenous infusion of antivenom do not affect the incidence or the severity of early antivenom reactions. Other treatments following snake envenoming depend on the affected organ system. Respiratory system is commonly involved after Indian trait envenoming. Along with the administration of antivenom, respiratory support with back mask or mechanical ventilation is vital to save the life. If the filtration process of the kidneys are affected, peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis is carried out. Although administration of fresh frozen plasma FFP, to restore the depleted clotting factors is effective in some snake envenoming. There is no proven benefit of FFP in Sri Lankan snake envenoming. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia Maha, is a known complication of some pit wiper envenoming, particularly in hump nose wiper envenoming in Sri Lanka. Plasma paresis is an available option to treat this condition. Treatment of local effect of envenoming is equally important in the management of snake bite patient. Relieving the pain will reduce the anxiety and calm the patient. Prophylactic antibiotics are used to prevent secondary infections at the bite site. In order to manage the hemorrhage, it is indicated to aspirate both hemorrhagic and non-hemorrhagic blisters. Care of necrotic tissue may need surgical attention and sometimes therapeutic amputation may be indicated to prevent the spread of the venom and necrosis to the rest of the body. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you.